Hello! Sorry I'm late today. Um, seven minutes late and this isn't to be erotic. I've just realised the cardigan is a bit hot. <laughs> just before, well before anyone gets here. You'll see later. Right, um, I'll wait for some people to pull along in. Um, hopefully there'll be a big rush because you've all been waiting. Why is she late? No! Um, today I have lots to talk about. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get over the... I'll keep within my half an hour. <laughs> um, but I've got new releases of ladies and new releases of miniatures and more talk about something maybe <laughs> oh hey Canon, bye again thanks for swinging by morning john dave um of course anyone if you can only see a bit or you only catch the end or whatever this will all be back on the facebook afterwards and on the youtubes as well um, I've got some lots of cool things to show you. Um, we've also got a bit of Rude, which has been the highlight of my week. Hi Carol! Tim! Um, what else? So the topics today are new stuff, new stuff, new stuff, pre-orders, pre remember them, um, Kickstarter, Painted miniatures. I'm sure, I had other stuff. I should write notes for these, but I'm sure I'll uh, I'll be rambling along, and also upcoming shows and malark and whatever else pops into my head. There's twenty of you already. I've normally, got to wait a few minutes. What happens when I'm late? Oh no, Sim is also watching. We're casting on the big telly. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> right. So I suppose I will start off by showing some cool stuff. Before I get on my small rant. <laughs> but, but I've been discussing Kickstarter quite a bit this week and it's frustrating because I don't have the time or the hand energy to have long typed debates so I thought I'd use my platform. I, I love chatting about this sort of stuff in person which is why I like the tabletop industry meets that we have in Nottingham but I find it a real struggle typing one because of the pain but also um, I get really frustrated and kind of just want to go no you're wrong and that's unfair so anyway um before we get to that i haven't shown you these yet this is the ats the viewfinder um john morris has painted them up isn't that utterly stunning i'm in love with it remember how excited i was just by the sculpts and now it's painted so lovely so the ladies are all in one piece the viewfinder's in free but it fits together really easily because when I saw that chain myself, I was a bit like, oh, how's that going to glue? But it's got these little pins and it just pops into the into the tripod, which is genius. That is Rob. So Rob McFarlane sculpted the tech. And Alan Marsh, who's done the rest of our World War II, he sculpted all these ladies. And together, what a dream team. I'll show you the backs. No, don't forget the back. Hi everyone who's just joined. Aren't they lovely? That's possibly some of the nicest stuff I've ever seen. And I made that happen. That's such a cool feeling. Off you go, ladies. So we also have, I still haven't put proper pictures of these up. That's how busy it's been. Um, Paul Cubbin, who was our very first painter. Hi everyone who has just joined. Um, Paul Cubbin has painted some of the Amazons for us and he is a beast so he paints very subtly and I've got to make sure I photograph them properly but they're so nice all the tiny you really need to see them at church to see how close I can get to see them in person just all these real soul little shades he has on them so nice so that's fear and she's only available, she's now the only way post Kickstarter you can get hold of dun, 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 the Peak Sprite. So that was a, a sort of a one off on the Kickstarter to get just the Peak Sprite, but now it's not unavailable. You just got to get it with, with her. Look how small it is! Oh my god! It's so small! So that's on a 1p, and that's on a 2p. Who else have we got? 
quite nice with the light actually. And there we have so this is the spear lady. I utterly love the way this is that sort of oldie bronze. Yes. Ooh. Obviously I'll take poto photos photos so you can see them properly, but this does a little first reveal y. Ooh. So that's my arm holding them up. I have a sip of coffee before I show you the others because I haven't had any yet. And I was I sorry I was late. It was purely because I was just not looking at the time. <laughs> I went, oh crap, I've got five minutes, run. I had a very exciting week. My shower got fixed for the for the first time in uh, about five months. So I've got a working shower now. That's exciting. It wasn't me being smelly at all the trade shows, I swear. So this is fierce as fuck <laughs> with a P because obviously would not swear on this esteemed channel. Look at that cape. Arr. Hi Dave Andrews. Look at that. There are a few comments. Oh, she's got some sort of dangly. Fluff, there we go. Some of the comments saying, but how do you know it's a woman? Exactly. She is armoured up properly. She does look quite orcish. I will totally accept that. That's her scream, a massive scream, and it's a bit of an orcish helmet. But that is a lady you um, would be terrified of. And that's the whole point, because they're in combat. Woo! Although this lady, you would be extra terrified of. That means stuff is about to go down. Boop, boop. <laughs> Doot. <laughs> it's a very serious hobby, of course. You must never make uh, silly noises. Check that out. Doot, doot. Amazons. Uh, how many more have I got? A couple more to show you and now I'll go to the next topic. Absolutely lovely, all of them. Do you have the kids painted? Yes! <laughs> Somewhere around here. So John and um, John Morris uh, painted a lot of them and Cubbins painted the last few so there's a mix of their work. So the ones I'm showing off here are the Cubbin ones because they're the latest that have just arrived. But yeah, the painted kids are lovely too. Look at that, it is so nice! Even a little little vase. Oh, come on, get them. How stunning is that? So she's a little stealthy assassin, but you could use her as an apocryphy as well, because she's got a little dagger sneaking out there, and maybe that's poison. Or it's a lovely paracetamol-based drink, and that's just to, to cut some herbs. <laughs> You know that versatile is my favourite word. I think every release is dotted with. These minis are very versatile. And two more, two more Amazons to show you. And then I'll talk about some more stuff. Then I'll show you something else. Look at this. So she's in a pack. She's one of the elite, elite crew with the, uh, the one who looks quite orcish. They're both just very brutal. They're the super soldiers. They're almost that sort of mindless berserker. So they're all sculpted by Shane Hoyle. And Cubbin has painted this batch. Paul Cubbin. You'll see him around a lot. He um we all use the same freelancers. So he does a lot of Great Escape games, uh, War Games Illustrated, North Star stuff popping up. If it's really good, kind of dirty and grungy with little details, it's Paul Cubbin. One more Amazon to show you. Doo -doo. Hello. She's hard to photograph because of her leg. She's a little bit like a flamingo. <laughs> come on, camera. Yeah, I'll take photos of all of these. She's got more depth going on. Come on. There we go. Ba -choo. 
So the Kickstarter is done. It is done. Done, done, done. They're all gone. If you're watching this and you're thinking, damn, I haven't filled in the pledge manager, then send me a message because of course you'll always get your miniatures. It's never entirely done. There's always a few people that disappear and I always worry if, if you're dead or in jail or anything like that. Um, or maybe just not on the internet anymore. But there's, yeah, there's always quite a bunch of pledges that never get fulfilled. Like they're here. I have had them where they've come like a, a year later or so. And uh, it's went, did I get, like, no, you didn't fill in the pledge manager. Here's the stuff. <laughs> so yeah, you'll always get the stuff. The only thing if you're really late is you might not get some of the stickers or whatever if I've lost them. Paul Cobbin is watching. There he is. The arch is the only one with a flat enough skirt I could put a fancy pattern on. Honest. Is it? Now I want to check back. No, you've put fancy patterns on all of them, Cubs, I'm afraid. <laughs> that is the fanciest, though. But they're very nice. Thanks, thanks, Cubs. They were totally worth it. I'm just going to have a sip of coffee and regain my thoughts. Is it too milky for you all again? <laughs> it's slightly less milky than it normally is as well. Hmm. So, sorry, I just uh, come watch Annie drink a coffee and sigh. Hmm. Um, I'm in a good mood today. I think from my, if you've read my Twitter this morning, you might have thought I was in a mood. I woke up grumpy because I had a very annoying, annoying dreams went Meh. and then had a, a bit of a, dis started a bit of a discussion about Kickstarter. But I thought I don't want to spend my Sunday <laughs> bothering with it. So I do that horrible thing where I start off a controversial discussion and then disappear. But I definitely like to get talking about that. But I want to show you some other things first just to uh before i get on my kicks it's not a rant it's it's just a nice dis discussion but because i'm on the video i get to have a one-way discussion because <laughs> i'm an awful person twitter's especially hard because you don't have so many um characters to do it so i just get frustrated that i can't put what i want and i end up over about 10 tweets <laughs> and obviously it's all a time sink and i've got lots of stuff to do Morning mother and my niece Hope. I'm on the telly. <laughs> Mama's been excellent this week again, helping out. Uh, oh gosh, I've got a little paragraph from Cubbin. What's he say there? Lovely sculpts again. They're crisp and delicate with really good athletic proportions. Each model has its own character as well, with a unique face and body shape, as well as equipment, instead of being generic Greekish type. Thanks, Cubbin. Check is in the post. <laughs> so we had a new release. In fact, I've got some people waiting, so I'll go I'll go to that first, because I know you're waiting for your moment to shine. I wanted to show something off, um, but because my telephone is there, I can't show you it. Um, so you know how we have had 18 brand new releases of the terrain, which is now rebranded as Bad Squiddo Scenics? At the ready. Um, it's not really a rebrand. It's just so it's got its own cool sticker to put on stuff and still ties in with Bad Squiddo games and all that. But it's just a bit better than me saying, have you seen our terrain stuff? <laughs> it's Bad Squiddo Scenics, new terrain line. Scenics. Cynics decor, all that sort of stuff. Um, but anyway, rambling. We've got a new logo for it. Um, Marty has uh, altered the logo, the existing Bad Squiddo Games logo, just for a bit of fun. So it's got a little um, little signpost over saying, uh, what's it, Bad Squiddo Scenics. Um, Mike and Tim have the image. I don't think you can post uh, pictures in the comments, so it might be down to Tim. Try. Um, but if Tim can whack it onto Twitter and then put a link in there, then you can all have a quick look over. And Tim, if you get the people from Twitter to come here, look at us, we're on 35 viewers, madness. Um, yes, then you'll be able to see the new logo and it'll start appearing around as well. And obviously it's not replacing Bad Squid or anything. It's just a nice little wing and a way of distinguishing it. So Bad Squiddo Scenics. Does it work? There's always a lag between me and the text. But if you haven't seen it, you need to go check out our scenic section because it is now huge. 
it's got 32 packs and something I'm going to be doing later is videoing all of them um, just putting putting them on the table setting the the camera up so I can just show you them a bit like this but if they're on the table then uh, so I'm reading as well if they're on the table then you can see them a bit clearer and all that and I'll really go around the details because the photos never give them justice because there's so many little bits and bobs Ristol's put on there that yeah if I if I put I might end up doing them rather than doing 32 separate videos I might do a video of sort of like five each of similars so you know the food the cargo the food supplies together the, tr the treasures together um, yeah, just lots of little videos giving you a tour of them so you can get a better idea and a better idea of scale as well. So keep an eye out for that. Tim's posted the logo on the Twitter. It's amazing. Thanks, Mike. The scenery is incredibly clean castings. Yes. Thank you. I, I absolutely love them. And I, again, I really think you need to see them to believe. Because a lot of people do when they cast or make terrain, it's sort of like you use the B quality stuff. But because ours are all quite small, we can retain the detail. You know, we're not casting massive buildings where the cost would then make them, you know, 500 quid or something. Because um, we stick to small, we can use the top resin, the same resin, the same technique as the miniatures. So we don't have many resin miniatures. Um, so it's the Bear, Freya, uh, Chibiani, all of that is cast exactly the same as the terrain. So that's just a little indicator of how lovely it is. Not to blow my own trumpet. Ristol has sent a parcel this week. So a lot of the terrain is the revamp of Ristol's Extraordinary Market. And he's also been adding loads of stuff to the range for us. So it's not just all that old stuff's back. There's loads of new stuff too. Um, so again, if you think, oh yeah, I know what Ristol's looks like. There's loads of bits that you... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, cop in, don't be rude. <laughs> oh gosh. Um I've totally lost my train of thought now, thank you. Uh, yes, there's lots of bits that you might not have seen. Um so go and have a look again. And there's a few bundles in there as well, including the Halloween special. Um Brain Yes, he sent two new kits. Mum has seen them. She can confirm. Hard things trying to get mum to sign the non-disclosure. <laughs> She's rubbish. <laughs> She'll be telling everyone. Oh, guess what the new release is? <laughs> so we've got two big packs from Ristol's coming. Um, obviously, it's resin's a bit slower to get into production, so I'm not sure when they'll be out, but I'm not teasing them at all. They're just going to bam and you're going to lose your mind because... I feel like each thing we do is better, uh, better than the last, and um, this really is nice. Um, so what else do we have? So yes, new terrain, go and look at it. Um, we did a new a new lady release on Friday, which we haven't done for a little while. It's all been sorting Kickstarters out and stuff. Although, um, as a side note, Kickstarter's all done! But that means maybe next week I might release um, some of the stuff, see what I've got, because I might need to get some restocks of other bits before I can release them. But I should be able to release the Amazon, so if you missed out or you got yours and think, ah, I wish I'd got the rest, then you can do that. How cool is that? So, yep, yeah, keep an eye out and there'll be some Amazon. So that's also the Pegasus and Norbert. I put the Pegasus and Norbert at Tabletop Gaming Live with Sarissa and I know they sold some of them so there's some floating about already. So that's cool. So I told you about loads to talk about, I'm just monologuing. Trying to, trying to fit it all in. So the new, we had a totally unrele unrelated, non-Kickstarter standard, standard release Friday. Um, as my mum can attest, it took me all afternoon coming up with their backstory sorting the images out, editing the images, putting it online, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, thanks Andy Hobday from Footsaw, he was ace, he was helping me out with uh, some ideas for the backstory and I'm pretty chuffed with it. <laughs> <laughs> Mama Squiddo does pronounce chameleons very unusually. Shyamalan. <laughs> Here we go. 
so this is the leader so it's a pack of three this is the legendary see she's got a sake there let's show you all three and then i'll tell you the story Doo -doo. made my own japanese myth i was very impressed with help of andy <laughs> Oh, that's terrible. I'll never make that noise again. That one. And that one. Hello. <laughs> Talking to them like I talk to guinea pigs. Hello there. What are you doing? Good to see you. So these three, these are three travelling ladies. And the myth has it that they turn up. You'll just be drinking away in the bar it's always drinking establishments the doors open and they appear what is going on here it's three women and uh middle lady middle lady nobody knows her name she's a little drunk already and she starts challenging people to jewels and they all think what is, what is this madness and then, in, as I put in the description, in classic cine cinematic vision, she uh, yeah she manages to pretty well to pretty much to totally defeat everyone in the combat, much to their dismay, and then proceeds to head to the bar and drink for the rest of the evening. But being a woman and everything, the the dudes have already been demasculized a little bit there by being beaten repeatedly. That they then try and outdrink them as well, to, out as well. Instead, I think maybe well, okay, fine, she could beat us in combat, but we're men and we can outdrink them. Um, and they don't manage that either. They all drink till they pass out, and then when they wake up, these three mysterious strangers are gone. Did it happen, or was it all in their drunken minds? I like it anyway. Um, yeah, they're three lovely, lovely story, uh, lovely stories, lovely miniatures. I'm really chuffed with them, especially as she's just really different. These mysterious Ronin ladies. And you could write all sorts of backstories. Somehow the, the sculpting, she reminds me of the lady from, um, from Westworld, the, the one with the dragon tattoos, a blonde lady, but it's like her in Japanese style. <laughs> I don't know how, I think it's the expression or something. Um, just that real like badass uh, stoic sort of character. And I love it. Um, so that was a rare release which we put out on Friday. So we normally do Kickstarters, maybe the odd pre-order releases and there's been quite a bit of discussion lately about <sighs> there's the whole thing about <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing about the um, Kickstarter and the unions going on at the moment and a lot of people saying that people should just not use Kickstarter and we should just release standard. So I was like, cool, let's do a standard release. So one moment, let me just show you. Boop, boop, boop. So this fantastic trio got released on Friday. They've made their way drunkenly barging into places all over the internet getting followers and likes and retweets and oh my god shut up and take my monies what what a hit uh, so far since release we have sold zero hey which is not a surprise you may be thinking what that's terrible yes it is terrible and it's probably a terrible idea for me to tell you because this happens a lot where I tell you about the awful parts of the industry <laughs> and it just looks like I suck or something but um, it's just because I tell you about it and other people don't because you're not supposed to um, but yeah standard releases suck so they look like they're getting a lot of traction online and the sales just do not reflect that so if I'd put a kick every release basically they're not always zero in a couple days but it's not like release and then your paypal goes boom 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 it might be at one week Boop. <laughs> Boop. um so yeah i'm trying to point out when people are saying oh just 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 standard release like 
you can you take a hit every time you do that and i don't want to just kickstart all the time because it's just a relentless and it's fun i love kickstarter but i think if i was always doing a kickstarter I'd be like oh great the other, then that would wear off she's like oh she's doing another kickstarter great um hang on i'm not i'm not talking so um Again, a lot of it's just a lack of, of understanding how how the industry works. And you don't you wouldn't know that if you weren't in it and I didn't used to. So this pack, this little pack here, cost me about eight hundred pounds to put into production. That's a lot of money. Um so that's just an idea. So if you think of all the other releases we've done, um it's not it's not cheap. Um the sculpting, the painting, the casting, getting the packaging done. Um, it's it's not a cheap way to release things. So when I get grumpy, when people go, oh, you should do this and this and this and this. And I've got a bit grumpy this week about it because I want to do loads of World War II. I'm all over World War II at the minute. I'm like, I know I'd love to do it. And sometimes people are actually grumpy at me. Like, well, it's a disgrace she hasn't made these. And I'm like, I need the... the where? <laughs> um, so that's where Kickstarter is amazing and that you get your instant satisfaction because well, I know they're gonna sell I'm not sad about it it's just that's just how it is um they'll sell over time and once they get into retail and you you know people don't buy things as soon as they come out so next time they go to buy something I'll get, I'll get some of these to go on one of Geisha but there's no surge and it takes a long time even just to get your money back and I know there's companies watching that all say they've got minis out for 10 years that they haven't got their money back on and we're all we're all just little well all the little companies are just little check out my rumblings um 800 pounds a lot of money it's not like me going 800 pounds whatever um so when people say oh why don't you do this it's always got to try and choose the thing that well most of the time that should pay for itself at the very least you know pay for itself and then pay my rent and my, gu my guinea pigs rent I should start charging them rent. They've been living here free all this time. And tax. I don't even tax them. Wish I was a guinea pig. Yeah, I didn't I don't want to make it look like I'm being grumpy and like, oh, and I never want to look like a martyr of like, oh, I've released things and you haven't bought them. Because nobody's obliged to buy anything. And that's that's the nature of business. But yeah, I just wanted to point out that I do say but yeah a lot. I wanted to point out just how hard it is. And then you can see the amount on Kickstarter, obviously. So even even like the last Kickstarter, it didn't make any money, <laughs> but it covers the costs of having them produced, which means anything that's sold post Kickstarter actually makes money. Um, so at least it gets them paid for and then you're in the plus afterwards and that is satisfying knowing that that's that cost covered but sometimes I'll look at minis and just think you poor little thing you're not <laughs> you haven't paid your rent yet <laughs> um I'll go back to kickstarter in a bit because there's quite a few things I want to say about it um and yeah it's easier to talk rather than to type my wrists are really bad um well we're exciting all oh, the bofers the bofers um i was supposed to have it to show you today um the postman didn't deliver on friday to work and the casters were amazing and sent some to the house for yesterday and they never came either what's that about just means you'll have to wait a little bit longer i should have brought my assembled print because i've got the print assembled at work I totally forgot but the bofers it will be out it will be up for a long well long a pre-order which will go i just want to click back to a comment in a sec um it'll be a pre-order like the olden days <laughs> a normal pre-order um but i'm feeling a bit uncertain about that i'll just get back to it there's a chap there in risk of you being grumpy with me, I'd like to see some female mini suitable for fantasy role playing as there is a lack of that. I'm never grumpy at suggestions. I love suggestions and occasionally some of you will say something at the precise moment that will click and I'll go and make it. And there's a few of you that have experience of me going, 
let's do it now <laughs> but i'm afraid i won't be making any suitable for warhammer fantasy role playing i'm mostly sticking to historical and a few little um fun projects off <laughs> that sounds like historical's not fun but you know we're not purely historical and bounce about and i like things like the amazons where they're historical light historical based so you can get away with a bit more creativity as well um but the, the fantasy stuff is mostly if we do do bits they're mostly sculptor led um where the sculptors really want to do something <laughs> oh i think i just clipped out a bit there sorry i'm back um but yeah if you ask for fantasy stuff generally no is the answer and then uh, it, may, it might appear because i'm sure last year loads of people asked if i was doing amazon so i was like nope definitely not and then they appeared <laughs> yeah, here we go i just get i mostly get grumpy when i do a new release and i go look at this thing i've just spent a few grand on and then they go cool but what you should make is <laughs> <laughs> and it's usually something I really want to make, so I'm like, please buy this and then I'll make the other thing. Uh, let me just scroll these. Amazons are great for RuneQuest. And Pigs in Biplanes is actually coming. Oh, I've just made that bounce. Whoop. Um, can I have a quick time check as well? Um, so, yes, the Bofors. The Bofors. The release of the century. <laughs> I know there's a lot of people excited about it. I am. It is a beast and I can't wait. So I'm getting the sample, sample cast, and I've just got to approve that. And once I've approved it, they <laughs> crank up the castometer and uh, really launch them all out. I've got message notifications coming up. Go away, I'm filming. I have permission to continue longer. I did start later though, so I'm going to go on a little bit longer today. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Kickstarter, Bofors, Bofors. Um, yes, so I've got to approve it. I've got to check the cast over, which is beautiful. It's such a lovely thing. All my previous casters would say, here's a few hundred of something. And then I'd say, but the, it's got no leg. <laughs> but we've cast a hundred of it. It's got no leg. So at least now, when I get the first test cast, make sure it's got all the legs. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can actually, then they don't waste time. Or if I go, oh, actually, which I don't, because I'm an excellent, I'm sure my casters can attest to me being an excellent client. <laughs> so I'm almost certain that I will approve the Bofors immediately and just go, oh, this is so cool, and assemble one of them. Um, one will go straight to John Morris, the poor sod, who will be painting the whole thing. Because I say Bofors, but it's the gun and then it's a whole diorama built around it as well so it's this beast crank up the castometer we made a mini <laughs> that is exactly how it works kirsten can attest to this being a caster that's exactly how it works so once i've approved the uh both as next week i will then sit and frown at it for a bit and decide how much it should cost uh, i have a cost from the caster so I have to do all my maths and that meme with the lady and all the maths in the background that's me costing up miniatures and then it's going up in pre-order um, i'm hoping it will be up in time for christmas so it depends on demand and a few things i don't like making promises but there's a good chance if i get up for pre-order next week that <laughs> kirsten that <laughs> if i put it up for pre-order next week then there's a very good chance that you'll have it in time for Christmas. Certainly if you're in the, if you're in uh, the UK. Um, I'm, what I think I'm going to do is put a little bit of a discount as a pre-order incentive. A little bit of a discount. Um, I'm actually very scared about it. As I was just explaining how bad non-Kickstarter sales are. This Bofors. So if you know now that these... Oh, sorry ladies. These cost me £800, then you're going to know that Bofors is a lot of money and it's a lot of money to cast and it's a lot of money to produce. And if I put it up for pre-order and I get five pre-orders, you, wherever you are in the world, you'll probably hear me going, nah! so no pressure but please if you want it join the pre-order so that's going to take some time to get its cash to the back but it is so stunning and then i've got more plans for the uh 
for the World War Two British ladies as well. So they are so nice. But I'm also I've got um, more Soviets in the works, but also whole this book that I've been after for so long. Found it at Paul Meekins. Thanks, Paul Meekins. And it's a Bible of something not obscure, but not covered. Um, and that's a whole other nation that I want to do. But again, it's a, at least a few grand, and I don't have, don't have it just lying around. So again, the nature of Kickstarter is that you get that funding. Um, and but yeah, I don't want to just kickstart everything, so I'm in a bit of a who. Hang on a sec, and I'll get into my proper kickstarter monologue because I want to make make it clear I'm not just whining because that's rubbish. Mm. So I've established that <laughs> normal releases suck. Kickstarters aren't quite so so sucky, <laughs> but um, either way, it is hard to make uh, to make caches on this let alone eat and all that but i don't want to turn into that please buy my things i'm so poor this time. um so every time there's a problem i want to try and fix that problem and uh, it'll all be ace so there are some problems at the moment we've obviously got brexit coming up which we're not sure about there's lots of uncertainty people are boycotting kickstarter despite the union telling you not to um and that that concerns me because it's now Kickstarter and the Kickstarter of Effect have made it so you kind of have to Kickstarter. Um, and now if people are boycotting Kickstarter, we're like, oh, thanks everyone. <laughs> this is really great. Oh, shuffling up. Um, so yeah, that's always uh, an uncertainty and people are not asking. It's a bit, of, a bit weird. So I'm ranting, I'm not ranting, I'm discussing it, but I'm actually not asking for advice. So that's when I get extra grumpy. <laughs> Because it's hard, because people go, well, if you do this, if you do that, I've either done it or someone I know has done it. And again, it's not just me going, well, this isn't fair. My miniatures aren't selling. It's every company my size is all experiencing the same thing. And they're all on this knife edge of how to how to get things to work. And I know it's not the minis and they love the minis and they do do ace. But in order to get the... I don't know where I'm going now. <laughs> to get it to really work. So some people go, well, I do regular releases and it's fine. But these are companies where they'll have a day job or a partner with a day job. And there's all these different bits and bobs or people saying, well, I can afford sculpts when, you know, the cost of a sculpt is anything from 50 quid to a grand per sculpt, depending on who you use. You can pay 50 quid for a sculpt, but... Yeah. <laughs> Again, such a hard one without being mega bitchy. Woo. Um, yeah, so if you want to create these miniatures that people want, good quality, everything done lovely, you know, like that terrain being in the top. Oh, totally lovely. Oh, totally lovely. That costs a lot of money making smaller scale or sculpting using, oh, it's horrible, using cheaper sculptors doesn't cost as much and that then reflects some sculptors are amazing they're just under charge charge more sculptors that's how i got into this problem keep telling them to charge more and then... um yes uh, i've gone over and my rant doesn't seem to have gone anywhere um i mostly <laughs> mostly just want to not because i'm concerned sometimes when i mention things on kickstarter they look like a right miserable sod and i'm not yay uh, I just there are a lot of problems at the moment um, in the industry, I think, and we've got to figure out how to how to fix it. And I do think a lot of it is down to the big big ones leading the way. Don't want to mention any names. Can see you. <laughs> but that's what created the Kickstarter culture. The big companies with loads of stuff, loads of free stuff, party, party, party. And then you do one that's like, why haven't you got a million figures in this? Like, well, because why aren't you giving a million figures free? <laughs> and so when people are saying Indiegogo, which is crap. <laughs> I'd rather do a pre-order than Indiegogo. But if those big, I say big boys, big folk, but they're probably all boys. Um, but if those big people go to Indiegogo or something like that, or they made a stance against Kickstarter or something like that, it would happen. 
but I found it frustrating that people asking me to boycott Kickstarter is effectively me killing my own company and my company is me <laughs> so <laughs> if my com it's not like I get a lovely payout or anything if my company's bust I'm bust so it's it's that whole there's so much terrible in the world that you have to pick and choose where to make your stance and yeah it's difficult I get I get that it's difficult but boycotting Kickstarter and boycotting all the Kickstarters is only gonna hurt these these little ones like me when that's that's now the main way for us to actually make a living and people go boycott it stick it at kickstarter all right but but now we're dead <laughs> but yeah I, I hope kickstarter sort all their crap out for many many reasons and yes the union organizers are actually saying don't boycott kickstarter so if you're boycotting you're actually going against their wishes um yeah things are always more complicated and then when, when I've been ranting at, uh, in private, I occasionally rants about stuff to get it out of my system. But one of them has been like people not having a problem with buying miniatures manufactured in China where they don't have any unions, but that's OK. <laughs> but then they'll they'll buy those from the big companies, but then they'll boycott Kickstarter for not having a union and then kill the smaller companies. And I'm like, but your principles were... <laughs> Anyway, I've gone way over. Let me know if there's anything that you want to uh, address before I disappear. Michael is watching. Hello, Michael. That is my brother. Hello. One of my four. Um, I made mum read this. <laughs> it, is, it is such a horrific book. It is horrific in every way. Um, I'll quickly go into that. I guess I buy quite a lot of um, cheap cheap anything to do with women in history books I, s I glanced at this went oh that's cool i like that um can't remember off the top of my head the dude's name but that famous photo I'm like ah oh, it's made into a woman that's cool i might make that into a mini because it's a good visual um interesting a book about world war ii cool arrived i was like woo my book <laughs> it was Oh, <laughs> oh dear i appear to have accidentally bought some soviet um Soviet World War Two erotica, mild erotica at least, but it's it made me laugh so much earlier in the week. It's very poorly written, so I've made Mum read some of it out on video, which is the best. <laughs> she wasn't allowed to read it beforehand; she just had to uh, she had to read it as she went along. So watching her lose her mind at the bad writing is amazing. Um, I will be filming myself reading some of it and I'm going to try and find more industry people. I've so far, far had a no from James of Needy Cat. I did approach him and went, would you like to read some Born on video? <laughs> no, no, I don't think I will. Boo. But I'm going to find, I will find some. Even after to uh, trick them somehow. <laughs> but yeah, this, this terrible, terrible book has brought me so much fun. And I think I will, in honour of it, make that into a mini. Because that's a cool mini anyway. Probably change your hair up, make it a little bit more historical. Right, that's been a long one. And uh, yes, I hope you are appreciative of had... Was it? I had two, week, two weeks of these where I was absolutely exhausted. And then last week I was just having to be a bit quiet because I was at my mates who were asleep. And this week I am I am full Annie, yes. Uh, although I'm knackered, but I am a different type of knackered. Woo! So the rest of the day I will be doing chores. Yes! <laughs> How exciting is my life! But I will also be doing some computer work after my chores. <laughs> Yay! So I will be videoing some of those drains, so I might get some of that put out. Um uh, maybe a newsletter, so in case you're just bored of watching my face, then you'll see it in typed form. <laughs> I tried out text to typing this week. It was the worst thing ever. Well, this is amazing. I don't have to hurt my hands, and then it just comes up as jarble. But I thought maybe that could be a new language. Who knows? Um, so newsletter, Bofa's announcement will be next week with full pictures and a million pictures because it is such a really nice thing. And then yes. It's so nice. And I might do some little bundles with if you haven't got the existing uh, ATS stuff. There's a little bundle thing as well, like the viewfinder and the such like. Can you call it viewfinder? It's identification telescope. Um, yes, lots and lots and lots and lots of things. And uh, more videos. 
that aren't these live ones but we're on number 11 now and these live videos have absolutely I used to get really really anxious about doing a video and the older ones on the channel that are about two minutes long I take all day trying to film it and then get really stressed and then be in a mood for the rest of the day but this one um <laughs> so I'm gonna get reading those comments um but now I'm in like week 11 of this I'm pretty easy chatting to the camera so it's almost like it's given me a good confidence boost and practice to do some more um, sort of standard videos about specific topics I've got quite a lot in mind and lots and lots of background stuff I've been dealing with is over now yes or all nearly over so I'll have time to do stuff like that I keep saying stuff stuff and things oh my god Walking Dead's back on um, this well tonight effectively but I'm not in America so Tuesday I think now TV has it and I'm so excited so if you follow on Twitter then go and watch my uh, excitement although I tend not to tweet when the thing's on because I think people mute me in case there's spoilers I never put spoilers but people spoiler reply but yeah walking dead great uh, as usual if you do not follow me on any of the other stuff go do that before you forget so there's baggy's cave on Facebook which you should join it's our little clubhouse <laughs> um, Facebook Facebook you're obviously here but you might not actually like the page go check if you do cause it's strange um, Instagram, which I've been sneaking loads of sneak peeks and stuff into the stories, which is kind of fun. And see you on Twitter, of course, and the YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube because uh, I've been watching a few stuff at the moment. They say subscribe and ring the bell. So ring the bell. I think that makes you get a notification. Thank you, Jamie and Beth, for noticing this amazing cardigan. <laughs> Sad times though, this is cardigan wear, but the rest of all in t-shirts. Yes. This was purchased by my mother who is watching. Thanks mum for my new cardigan. It's good. Right, I better go. I've been on for ages. I could happily go on for longer, but then it'd be false advertising to tell everyone it's half an hour. Uh, nothing else to show you. No, no, I want to stay, but I should go and do my chores. Goodbye. And oh yes, check out Tim Edwards. Post that link again. That's the new Bad Squid Scenics logo. Woo! Goodbye. Bye.